This is Jimmy Cabs in the 5150 interview series here in the lovely city of Glendale at the Complex on a very special evening. Tonight, as most of you know, uh, Earth is in turmoil, but we are blessed today because the original, the one and only, the legendary and the iconic, psychedelic warlord himself, Nick Turner, has come back to Earth to grace us with his presence. How are you doing, Mr. Turner? I'm really well. I'm, I'm making one of my rare... Um, uh, uh, what was it? Rare appearances. <laughs> rare appearances. <laughs> Manifestations on the material plane. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of uh, the 1950s movie, The Earth Stood Still. You've come oh, back as yeah. the Earth is in turmoil. Yeah, yeah. America and everything, you've come back to grace us with your music. Great, Great. thank you, yeah. Let's, I appreciate that. Let's get it started here. Yeah. Space Rock Odyssey, what is this? Talk to us about this. Space Rock Odyssey, well, it's an album that um, I was invited to put together a sort of uh, a, a, a jazz fusion album. So it's jazz fusion, and I was invited to play on tracks with Billy Cobham and Robbie Krieger and um, the Dutch keyboard player from Brain Ticket. I can't remember what his name is, Joel van der Hoogen or something like that <laughs> and uh, Steve Hillage and um, nice. Julie Smith is on it and um, and some guys I think the guitarist from Amandul um, 
I think maybe uh, Jürgen Engler, who's producing the album, maybe he's on it. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. I think I've also got some of the guys from this band on it. Nicky, Nicky Garrett is playing on one track, I think, and some people that played with me in this band before who were no longer in the band, mm -hmm. called Kafera Moon, who's the keyboard player, and Jason Willer, who's the drummer, who's just been off with... Jello by Afra. <laughs> so does this does this kind of remind you back of the vintage early years where you get a bunch of musicians and you all organically just jam? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, although I mean, it wasn't done within my control or within my direct sort of involvement, yeah. apart from playing on these tracks, you know, and and then other stuff was added to it, so augmenting it, you know, I think it's quite valid. Absolutely. Yes, it, I'm it, quite exciting. <laughs> the beauty of it is that remin that is reminiscent to back like in the early 20s and 30s of the original jazz artists where yeah. they would just get into a studio and just yeah, I mean, bash I it out. I listened to Charlie Parker, you know, and fantastic. They just they, they're all all these guys are all just you know, just completely improvising and it's fantastic. I find I find it really inspiring. Is isn't so, it even more let, let me explain this for our audience, because the majority of them are young. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, everything is just so mechanical, so fragmented, so structured. Music, and the beauty of music, is the free expression of being what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Artists like yourselves, and this is what I love about Nick Turner the most. I've been a fan of yours for over 30 years, and yet every time I see you perform, mm -hmm. Unpredictable. Yeah. I'd every hope. performance is different. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I, I, I want every performance to be the best performance I've ever done, and I want it to be completely unpredictable. <laughs> and, and it's organic, which, which, <laughs> yeah. is, which you don't see that nowadays with most performers. No, it's right. You know, it's all just either programmed or, or they're miming to it or something like that. No spontaneity, really. It's all sterile. Do you find that those traits in this day and age in the music business or or an artist is not only missing but there's a huge void and that's why you've maintained this audience for over 40 years yeah i guess so you know i think i've i've never sort of tried to please the public i just try to please myself excellent and i try to i'm driven and and i sort of it's a challenge to me to produce music that i find exciting you know, I'm trying to please myself. I'm, it's all, you know, I'd like to play like John Coltrane. Well, I don't want to be him. Right, right. I want to play like me. <laughs> Isn't it also very uh, enlightening is the fact that the fact that you enjoy this well, yeah, goes, bounces off towards the audience. Yeah, and I think, you know, I try to make my gigs into spiritual experiences as well. I mean, it's what John Coltrane sure did. He, he sort of... He sort of uh, stopped taking heroin and just channeled it into his music. And I mean, I've never taken heroin. I've never, I've never ad advocated taking drugs. I just say people, people should do what they want to do, and hopefully they won't harm themselves. Right. You know, I've always, I used to give away LSD at gigs and stuff like that. You know, but I didn't force people into taking it. I just give people the freedom of choice. You know, and I wouldn't advertise them or advocate them doing it if they had any sort of mental or psychological problems. In fact, I carry around a, a bottle of vitamin B12 to bring them down. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I've always admired about you as an artist and as a performer, as I mentioned before, that you've always been genuine on stage, but the fact is, is that your music has remained timeless. Oh, cool. Be that as it may, do you find that this younger generation really grasps the whole concept of your performance and your music. I think so, yeah. You think so? I think so, yeah. I mean, people... I had a guy come up to me last night. <coughs> I, w I think I was in, in uh, San Antonio. No, I was in Phoenix. <coughs> this guy came to me and said, I saw you. I saw you in Scotland. He's a guy, a Scottish guy. <laughs> He'd seen me at all these concerts I'd done in Scotland, the, Wick the Wicker Man Festival, you know, wow. this is a sort of fest fire festival. But also I had a band previously called Inner City Unit. And he said, wow, that gig you did at Manchester University at 19, in 1982 was phenomenal. <laughs> he was telling me about all these gigs of mine that he's been to, and he's just like, wow, <laughs> completely Inter in awe. Interdimensional, man. Yeah. <laughs> For me, one of the things that I enjoy when I see you perform, which is tonight, but let me mention this real quick. San Francisco, you will be at the Elbow Room tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
San Francisco, make sure you catch the show. Yeah. One of the things that I've always enjoyed about your performance is that it's unscripted, meaning, yeah. Yeah. again, it it's, reminds me reminiscent, not of the 60s or the early yeah. 70s, but of the early 20s and 30s. Okay. That era has always been fascinating towards me yeah. because it seems that at that time, musicians had what I would say, quote unquote, no restrictions. Yeah. Nothing yeah. nothing was programmed, yeah. nothing yeah. was structured. Yeah. They yeah. get up there and they would just do it. They let the music become the ritual. Yeah, that's right. Your shows remind I'd me. Do that. I try to do that. You know, I do. I've done lots of gigs which I've made into rituals. You know, I played at Stonehenge on the summer solstice, and I turned it into a ritual of the death of the old sun and the birth of the new sun. And I was dressed up in this sort of bizarre costume, carried on stage by all these hell's angels, breathing fire. And I was chained, and then I had all these vestal virgins beating me with oak branches <laughs> for the death of the old sun, you know. And then in the morning we did another performance of the birth of the new sun, right. you know, and turned it into a spiritual thing. I like to do that at lots of gigs, you know, and I try to embody all that sort of thing in my music. I like to try to embody healing into it as well. I want people to, I tell people they should all be healing each other. We all need help. I need help. Yeah, absolutely, you know? right? <laughs> Let's heal each other. Let's love each other, you know. So it might be corny, but I think I believe it. I you know. know, I think on the contrary, right now in this day and age, whether it's here need. in the United States or around the world yeah. is what we need. We need the Nick Turner rituals of music. <laughs> Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. When you're performing yourself, as we talked about the healing aspect, mm. the whole uh, uh, interdimensional separation of mm. here on earth and then into the void of, yeah. of, of music, do you still feel that as a performer? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Amazing. I think it's, you know, I like to move. I like to feel I'm moving. I like to feel I'm touching people, you know, whether it be visioning, um, because the saxophone is such a sexual instrument. The reed and the, and the sensual, the reed and the, and the uh, and the tongue, to sort of direct the flow of music and the creative energy towards all the clitorises of the women in the audience. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> well, I think you know why not? You know, yeah. music is a very erotic. sexual, erotic experience, and I like to try to cover that as well. Only, you know, in a in a very if a casual way and very you know, with humor you know i like it too i think everything should, everything should be enjoyable you know not in, in a sort of dominating power thing or anything like that right. just in a loving thing you know spreading love to your friends and relations and uh why do you think it's so hard for us to love each other on this planet now? Oh, I think um, the problem is materialism, really. We all ought right? to be loving each other, and we ought to be providing for each other. You know, it's everybody's, everybody's afraid of starving, so they have to grab as much as they can. And it's a sort of lack of sense of sharing with people. Correct. You know, for helping to feed each other. You know, I thought that was great what they had in the, um, in the 70s, Hate Ashbury and all that, you know, this sort of all the big concerts and and all the people like, do you know, er Emmett Grogan? Yes, yeah. absolutely. People like him, you know, in spreading love and food and the community aspect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's fantastic.